Okay, we're back connected to the cloud. So we'll talk about the high-low method. So the high here is in November, the 67,500. So units produced 67,500. And what's the total cost during that time is 31,000. Vacation. And then low activity. It's the lowest one. It looks like the lowest activity is in June. In June, we had 17,500 at 18,500. So what we're doing here is we're looking at the change in activity and the change in cost related to that activity. So change in activity. change of cost. And then we can take that and divide it in order to get the cost per unit. Cost per unit. And so we have a 25 cents cost per unit. And then we could try to find out total fixed costs through that. So we're backing into the equation, right? This is all just algebra, right? It's all just y equals mx plus b. We just calculated our, our um, m. And so now we need to figure out, we know our x, right? We can plug it into any formula here. We know our x uh, at the high level, right? So let's use the high. So let's call this y, m, x, and b for our formulas. y equals mx plus b. We all know that. Our x here is our 25 cents. We calculated that just now by using the high and low. Right? We took the difference between the high and low activity from units produced and total costs, and then divided them into each other in order to figure out that we're about 25 cents per unit. We also know that. Uh, we're trying to solve for fixed costs. So we're solving for B. Um, we know our M of this is 67,500. And we know our total costs at this point are 31,000. Right, so we're solving for B. So what is B here? Y equals MX plus B. We take this times this, 67,800. And we can then take the 31,000 minus this. This, and we get our B. So that's our fixed costs. is our variable cost. This is total cost. So what, what are we doing? We're able to find now what our fixed cost is if we weren't aware of it. Right? This is a way of our, us estimating our fixed cost, similar to the scatter point chart. So instead of the scatter diagram where we're just taking different points and then drawing a line in between, which is essentially what a regression analysis does, which we'll get into, we're actually taking the data and we're estimating given the data. So a good question here might be, hey, why don't we know our fixed costs? Well, a lot of times when we're doing analysis, we don't know what happened at the beginning. Sometimes companies are very complex. It's not as simple as I bought one piece of equipment. They might have bought thousands of pieces of machinery, and we might be talking about a billion dollar company. So when we're doing estimates on projects and analysis, sometimes we have we have to do something like this. We have to take our estimates in order to determine a break-even analysis. Does this make sense? So just break it down into what you know. Like everyone here should know the basic algebraic equation, like the linear equation. And then we now know the high-low method in order to determine our fixed costs that we're solving for. So we just go step by step to fill out all the variables of this equation. Any questions on this? Make sense? Sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so for a real company, 
how would they decide what's a high activity, what's low activity? Is it just the all time highest and lowest they've ever had or how would they choose what to use? That's a good question. It depends on, it depends on judgment, right? So you might say in a year, you might, it depends on the data available. So if you have the data over the last year, that might make sense. Um, and you might use competitors data. Um, but at the end of the day, that'll be a judgment call. It won't be given on your test or homework, but you'll have to, uh, luckily, but it's a great question. It's something that you'll have to make your best judgment in order to determine how to estimate, um, given the data you're given for the company. But for here, you just would take the year of production and costs. That's a good starting point if you have that data available. Okay, thank you, Professor. No, great question. Any other questions? Okay, we'll keep going. So what's regression analysis? Regression is, you'll learn about it in your advanced statistics and your advanced accounting courses. You can use it in a calculator or you can use it in Excel. There's like functions, but essentially what it, it does is it takes through a, a statistical formula, it takes something called like the it, it takes the distance between all the different points on the scatter diagram and it, it estimates the line. So it's pretty much doing what we did on the scatter diagram, but it's doing it through an, a, a formulaic way. Um, you're not gonna have to know exactly how to do a regression here, just know it exists and you're gonna hear about it a lot. When you hear people talking about correlation and regression, that's used in most research. So you're, I, you're really going to have to learn about this in statistics. And once you do learn about it, make sure you master it. But it's going to be the same, the same objective, though. We're just trying to find total fixed costs and variable costs. And so the regression analysis is always going to be more accurate. So I'm not going to make you do a regression analysis. But in this case, if we were to do a regression of that data given, then it would be more accurate. And you could see how, by how much more. It turns out our actual fixed cost is 16688 and the variable costs are actually 20%, 20 cents per unit based on the regression analysis. So that's how we figure out our fixed costs or variable costs in when we have a set of data. 